You're listening to Bark and Wag's 15-Minute Vet Talk. Each week, your host, Polly Requa, interviews veterinarians and individuals in the pet industry from across the nation answering pet questions. Bark and Wag podcast is produced weekly for your enjoyment, and show notes can be found at BarkandWag.com under the podcast tab. That's B-A-R-K-N-W-A-G.com. Please remember to subscribe to Bark and Wag 15-Minute Vet Talk. Thank you for listening to Bark and Wag 15-Minute Vet Talk. Bark and Wag is dedicated to protecting our dogs through advocacy, education, and supporting like-minded dog lovers by selling custom pet products. Bark and Wag is excited to announce our new partnership with a Colorado hemp farm to produce a line of CBD products for your pets. Bark and Wag has CBD pet tincture available in 300, 750, 1200, and 2400 milligrams. Bark and Wag CBD is pet safe, no THC, it's made in the USA, and is CO2 extracted. Please check out Bark and Wag's website, BarkinWag.com. That is B A R K, the letter N W A G.com, to see our line of CBD and awesome merchandise. We love pooch ideas for podcasts and merchandise, so anytime send an email to Polly at BarkinWag.com with your suggestions. Welcome to Bark and Wag 15 Minute Vet Talk. I'm your host, Polly Requa. Today we're talking to Dr. Laura Brown, owner of Green Tree Animal Hospital in Libertyville, Illinois. Welcome, Laura. Hi, Polly. Well, it's that time of year, and I think for the past three years you've been on around this time, and uh, it's holiday, and we need to know what holiday foods are bad for our dogs. Tis the season. Yes. Uh, yes. Well, for we'll talk start about Thanksgiving, maybe, huh? Well, yep, and then leading into other holidays, I'm sure daily pet emergencies at hospitals double during the holidays. For sure, they can with con- consumption of toxic food for dogs, as well as eating decorations, plants, Christmas trees. <laughs> Correct, all of the above. Yeah. So, I guess the interesting one to me is the food because uh, one year we fed our golden retriever turkey thinking, oh, it was Christmas and uh, <laughs> and she was sick, I mean, for like 72 hours. And it wasn't very much. So, so it was just a regular turkey? Yes. Or, well, yeah, yeah, it must have been too greasy. So yeah, rich and fatty foods, I'm sure, are on the list. They are, like... Um, like white meat turkey for me isn't always that rich and fatty, but like the skin of the turkey or the insides, the stuff you pull out, like the giblets and things like that. Some people think that would be an awesome treat for their dogs and the dogs love it. But the fatty foods, things like bacon and the drippings and um, dressing and spices and things like that. What happens is one, their system's not used to it. So they can just develop significant gastroenteritis, so vomiting and diarrhea. But worst case scenario, the fatty rich foods make their pancreas so mad that they develop pancreatitis. And what is that? Pancreatitis is um, significant inflammation of the organ called the pancreas, which is the organ that helps you digest food. So when it's mad, it's also the organ that sends out insulin. Um, so when it's mad and inflamed, you can be really sick and people get pain, can get pancreatitis too. And from what I understand, it's pretty darn painful, but vomiting, not eating abdominal pain, and then they just keep vomiting and they get dehydrated and they're painful. And then they, you know, it, it just kind of one vicious cycle after the other. So I always tell people there's kind of this scale of pancreatitis a really significant, like on a scale of one to 10, a 10 needs to be hospitalized and they're hospitalized for days on IV fluids and anti-nausea medications and pain medications and sometimes nasogastric tubes and sometimes they have to have surgery, but those are the worst of the worst and they don't sometimes don't survive versus down to the ones who are dogs that might maybe like your golden vomited for a little, but it skipped a few meals and um, a day or two of missing meals rest the pancreas. So no food in there, the pancreas re- relaxes and settles down. And then they, a couple of days later, they feel better and act like nothing ever happened. And sometimes 
maybe somebody wouldn't necessarily take them to the veterinarian and they just get better because they sort of self-rested their tummy. And so if they do have pancreatitis, do is there medicine for it or is it just something what you just said where it just has to yeah. heal itself? It's not specific medicine, um, but all the medicine is to treat dehydration, make them not nauseous, treat for pain, and wait for the inflammation in the pancreas to settle down. Okay, okay. So then I kind of have a list here. So alcohol, obviously. Obviously not good. Yep. Dogs can get drunk and feel sick from that too. Candy cane, gingerbread cookies, popcorn, raisins, raisins and cranberry garland. So a lot of that's um, sweetness and sugar stuff. It'll just, ca- you know, overload. It'll just like us, will cause a gastroenteritis, so vomiting and diarrhea. The one on that list that's really toxic is the raisins. Okay. So that goes with grapes and raisins. Um, any grapes and raisins ca- can have the potential to cause kidney damage in dogs. Oh. And we don't know how much it takes so even one grape or one raisin could be bad for their kidneys so things like raisin bread those other fruit cakes what are those things called you know i think that's it fruit cake fruit cakes, they have <laughs> yeah. lots of that stuff in there so even though they didn't necessarily take grapes off the table or um, raisins out of the box but those kinds of foods that are made with those things over the holidays that's the one thing that is pretty significant because they're toxic to their kidneys. Okay. Uh, we have chocolate, coffee, and tea. So those guys are all um, have that product. There's a substance in them that's like, kind of like caffeine. Mm-hmm. And so all of those guys, they're, it's called xanthines, but it acts like caffeine, like an overdose of can- caffeine. High heart rate, they get vomiting, diarrhea, and depending on the dose, they could actually, heart rate so high, they could seizure and and potentially die from that. They get really agitated, really jittery. They're panting, they're drooling. And so any of those kinds of things, the best thing if you witnessed it happen or you know it's happened within a couple hour time period would be to call the veterinarian to get them in for in, to induce vomiting. Okay. So we could get all that stuff out of them before it has a chance to get absorbed into their bloodstream, then all the prognosis is better and the prevention and sometimes that's all you have to do but if they ingest a lot of that stuff and it's been a long time and or you couldn't get them to vomit or they didn't vomit it all up then they need to be either hospitalized on fluids or daily checks of their lab work to monitor their kidneys for 72 hours um, watching their heart rate and things like that to get them through the exposure and their stomachs can twist too with chocolate, right? Not necessarily twist. Twisting is happens with large volumes of things. Oh, okay. Um, chocolate just is first level is the vomiting diarrhea thing. And the next level is that um, kind of the caffeine type reaction with the high heart rate and seizures and things like that. Okay. Then on the list is uncooked meat, fish, and poultry with E. coli. Yep. Just like... Um, people you don't eat raw pork because there's parasite issues and with fish there's bones that could cause problems if they choked on them and so that's another reason why i'm not a proponent of raw diets oh because of the bacteria in there i mean one raw chicken breast with no bones in it that goes down is probably not going to be the end of the world but that's why i don't like people to feed a steady diet of that because it's dangerous for their exposure as well as the dogs okay uh tobacco yes just um most dogs don't wouldn't be attracted to that but now there's flavored tobacco and all that jazz and it's similar like the high the just like the not caffeine nicotine it's the nicotine in there that can cause similar symptoms like like sort of like caffeine high heart rate drooling, vomiting, diarrhea, seizure, that sort of thing. Right, right. That I'll, could have to, be. I'll, I'll have to replay also this holiday, the one that you did with Maddie when she found all that marijuana and ate it. Right. Because that's right. in the same house as this. So. Right, uh, exactly. Also on the list is uncooked yeast dough. Yeah, the reason that's bad is because it gets in the 
when they eat, like if you're making bread and they grab the bread before it's risen and the yeast is in there, then it expands in their stomach and can cause an obstruction or bloat. Yeah. Like you said, with the twisting thing, bloat first is the first thing that happens before it twists and their stomach just expands. It's really uncomfortable and they can't really get it out of them. You know, if there's a big ball of dough in there, they can't vomit it back up oh, if it gross. got, if it expanded. That's the other thing that does that is that Gorilla Glue. Oh. It expands inside. Oh, it does? Yeah. And then it can't come out. Do dogs like that? I've heard of a few cases of dogs eating Gorilla Glue. I don't know why they do that. Well, <laughs> it doesn't I guess, seem like it'd be tasty. I guess they do like glue. Yeah, I, I, there has to be something that attracts them to that. I don't know yeah. if it's smell or what. We had to have a dog, um, our other black lab was raised to the vet because they ate a bunch of Play-Doh. Yeah, Play-Doh's super salty if it's homemade Play-Doh too. No, I don't, I don't I don't cook. <laughs> it, it has it has a lot of salt in it, so then they get really thirsty. Okay. And they drink a ton of water and then that can cause like an overdose of sodium and that can cause neurologic symptoms. And next on the list which you talked about grapes, raisins and macadamia nuts. Yeah, um, the grapes and raisins are the kidney thing. The macadamia nuts is probably more gastroenteritis. Just too many of those causes a tummy ache. But the other part of some of that is the sweeteners, um, that the stuff that has xylitol in them. So, like, that's the fake kind of sweetener that's in a lot of gum. Okay. Um, xylitol causes low blood sugar in the short term and liver failure in the long term. Okay. So anytime, that's a common one, like kids have gum in their backpacks. Oh, yeah. Maddie eats, Maddie's ruined backpacks for that. Yeah. So they get in there and not all flavors of gum have the same amount of xylitol. So it really depends on the flavor and the brand about how much they can get that will be safe or not safe. So a little chihuahua eating one stick of gum is a big deal. Versus a 85 pound Labrador might not be as big a deal. That's why it's always important to kind of have that poison control number handy. Okay. Okay. Because even if your vet's not there, poison control will answer all those questions. Isn't it free too? The, um, it depends. Not necessarily. There's, remember, there's a people one, I think, and a dog one. Okay. And the animal one that we use is here is actually in the vet school at the University of Illinois. Okay. And it's manned by veterinarians. So they do charge, I think it's $65. Okay. And so if your pet is microchipped, they will go through home again and not charge you. Oh. Home again has a... Yep, Home Again has a program with them to help defer the cost of that. There's also an animal poison control through the ASPCA. Okay. And that number, so because it's through the animal, the ASPCA, um, I'm not sure if they ask for a donation or if they just, or will let it go for free, but their number is 888-426-4435. Okay, and I'll put those that in the show notes. Right, and then I'll um, the the University of Illinois one I'll get you as well. Um, that's my favorite one, but but they do give you a case number, and then you can take that information with you to the veterinarian, and and then there's a, a lot of follow up that can go along with that. And so, out of all the things that we talked about, what has the potential for An intestinal obstruction. Anything that's not digested. So like popcorn? Not popcorn, but those strings. You know when people string their popcorn? Oh, yeah. On, um, you know, for decoration and put them on the tree? Okay. The string is the bad thing. Okay. Okay. Because like a linear foreign object in there. So the other things that are like that are like dental floss. The other thing I've had dogs ingest that were turned out bad would be part of their leash oh uh, like eating yeah yeah but then as if you think about it garland for you know garland and and um lights that are on a string oh yeah sure, sure. 
sure. those kinds of things, they kind of start going and they don't chew them in half. Or, Well, first of all, if they're plugged in, then there's the electric electricity part of that. But if they're eating things that, you know, like have berries on them or something like that, and they keep going and the string doesn't break, then it's a problem for obstruction. So we had a black lab uh, named Wrigley and uh, the girls had made ornaments out, you know, like in pre-K and right. uh, they were hanging on the tree and I didn't even think about it, but she right. went after it and um, I came home from work and the ornament had been eaten and the tree was down and until she passed away, she would not go into the living room. It was like oh, really? she must have pulled for the ornament and then the tree almost probably fell, fell on, on her. her. Yeah. And uh, anyway, it scared her. But I'm sure that yeah. that's a problem, eating an ornament. That's a problem. And cats are a problem because they climb the tree and stuff. The other thing that can happen is they can drink the water in the tree. Oh. You know, in a live tree. Yeah. Um, and that can make them pretty have a pretty significant gastroenteritis like vomiting diarrhea it's not super toxic but depending on how much they get oh wow i didn't even think of that yeah probably cats more than dogs but sometimes dogs that are super hungry or thirsty because they're on certain medications or something like that you have to watch out for sure sure well those are all great tips And once again, we appreciate you being on uh, the podcast. You're more than welcome. It's always a pleasure. Yes. And with all the festivities, do not forget to relax and spend some quality time with your pet. That's right. Thanks, Polly. Yep. We look forward to having you back in 2020. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Bark and Wag's 15-Minute Vet Talk. If you like what you just heard, we hope you'll pass along our web address, www.barkandwag.com, to your friends and other pet owners. Have a pressing question for a veterinarian? Ask your question at barkandwag.com under the podcast tab. This has been a KFR production. Join us next time for another edition of Bark and Wag's 15-Minute Vet Talk.